Hi everybody, my name is Stuart McMillan and I am the Employability Manager for Venture Trust, um, which is a bit of a strange title considering what we're talking about today. Um, and I feel a little bit of a fraud because I have absolutely no heritage background whatsoever. However, we have been looking at delivering a number of projects with a kind of a heritage theme in Venture Trust and I headed those up before I changed my job role. So, um, Venture Trust itself, for those that don't know, we're a charity who work with people with a number of complex needs and issues. When I was listening to the guys from Canal College talking, we're probably working with an awful lot of the same kind of client groups. Um, the programmes that we run are based on a three-phase model where we do assessment and preparation in the, in the, in the kind of local community and then we do a wilderness-based journey. Um, where we are looking primarily at personal development. We use the, the wilderness as a kind of a vehicle to look at change um, and we find a very transformative experience for people. One of the things within that that we've noticed over the years is obviously all the places that we work, there's a huge amount of heritage that you are coming into contact with all the time, ranging from um, ruined villages to kind of the areas that you're moving in, in terms of the, the names of the areas, the, the, the Gaelic uh, terminology, etc. And over the years, we've talked a lot about whether or not that's something that we should really focus on and see if there's more that we can do. So from that, we started talking about different ways that we could um, add on a heritage kind of site to some of the stuff that we do. So we, we're passing through these landscapes we are using drovers roads, we are using old military roads and things. So the idea was that we would try and find a way to partner with uh, an appropriate uh, partner agency. In this case, we worked with uh, Historic Environment Scotland to look at ways that we could raise some of the awareness about heritage with our client group. But also in a kind of a more selfish way, it would raise some of the, the knowledge of our staff. So, Staff talk about some of these things in general terms as they're passing through these landscapes, but they wanted to be kind of upskilled and find out a little bit more about it themselves. Um, anything that we do, at the end of the day, we are personal development first and foremost for the client, so heritage had to be added value rather than uh, a kind of an end in its own right. So it had to fit with what we were already doing. And as I said before, we wanted to work in partnership so that they were the young people getting the best experience possible. At the end of the day, I can use Google as well as the next person, but you know, let's get the experts to talk about the things that they know about. Um, we also wanted to teach a variety of transferable skills. So one of the other facets to this course that we looked at was teaching the guys around uh, recording the journey and using video editing, etc., to look at a different range of skills. Um, so we brought in a a film tutor to do that piece of work alongside the personal development that we were doing and the input from HES. The end result of that obviously being that there should be a heritage uh, journey, a film at the end of it. It's not great being last on by the way because I suddenly realised how rotten my presentation was. I've got 30 odd minutes worth of clips of these fantastic films that I haven't put into this because I didn't know how to edit them down to something short enough. Um, so that's, uh, that's a note for the next time I do this. So what the group actually did was they participated in several weeks of group work in advance of the course. Now, the group that we actually ended up working with was based in Glasgow um, and we worked with guys who were um, young carers. The reason that we were working with them is they were a group that we were already engaging with, they were a key target group for us, but the problem we often had was that whilst they have an awful lot of things going on in their life, most of them were still at school. Lots of the other guys that we engage with are not engaging with school, they're caught in the criminal justice system, there are a number of other things going on, but the, the, the upside to that is you can work with them in the middle of the day quite easily. Um, the problem that we have is that we had this group of guys who were really keen to get involved with us, but they were only available at nights. So what we decide, decided was that working in a group kind of environment, doing group interventions at night would be the best way go forward with this. Obviously that hits some practical issues around um, engaging with partners and all the other things. So at the earliest stages of planning this project, HES for example were very willing to consider the, the idea of working outside of hours, 
guys were travelling through from Edinburgh to deliver sessions for us and everything else. So again, there was an awful lot in that initial planning piece around how can we make this work best for the clients. So the stuff that Venture Trust do and do all the time, we were delivering personal development, action planning, goal setting, looking at the specific journey requirements, where they were going to be going, how it was going to work, how they were going to deal with the lack of curling tongs in the, the wilderness environment, all the things that we usually deal with. Um, and alongside that, we were running alternate weeks, we were running sessions on videography skills, storyboarding, editing, uh, all those kind of things. So it was, a, it was actually quite a complex project in terms of the, the number of moving parts that was in it. We were asking these young people to come at quite a significant chunk of their evening time to come along and do these sessions. And then we were asking them to learn about the normal personal development stuff that we do, plus upskill themselves on everything to do with making a video, and then also learn all about the heritage relevant to the course that we're doing and help to plan the actual route. So they did heritage, map reading, rover specific research facilitated by the HES staff. You see what I mean about the board? I didn't even change the background slide. I don't know if um, the groups then undertook an eight day wilderness expedition where they retraced the journey of drovers between Argyll and Stirling. I simplified this a little bit. We actually ran two groups. We ran one in Easter, again because of people being in school, and we ran one in the October week. One in Easter naturally had to be truncated slightly. We also did a big piece about reviewing what worked in the first one, and that then shaped what the second one was. And I'll explain that a wee bit more in a second. So in addition to the personal development sessions, camping, outdoor activities, etc., they recorded their journey, their journey and they visited a number of different sites of historical interest along the way, including spending a night in the Auchendrain Township, where they also had a Gaelic storyteller, they had a Cayley, they had storytelling around the fire. So they kind of they did their very best to kind of really develop a way of experiencing this. And again, a lot of that was to do with HES's involvement in this. We had a kind of a wish list of things we thought would be great if you could do that, and they actually made an awful lot of them happen. We pulled a lot of strings and they, I think they made, bent an odd rule here and there and as a result of that we managed to have a very, very interesting experience for the guys. First night in a longhouse having stories told to you by a, a really talented uh, Gaelic storyteller. Give a very different understanding of what it would be like to be in that environment. Which echoes the stuff that you guys were talking about earlier on. At the end of the day, something that's tangible and real and you can touch it has a totally different effect uh, than just talking to somebody. After the journey, the groups participated in a number of post-course sessions where they edited the films down in the stills, which sounds a lot easier than it actually is, because when you give a group of young people cameras and video equipment and say, just film what you like, you tend to end up with hundreds upon hundreds of hours of stuff. Um, and that was where, again, the, the video tutor came in their own. We did what we could to plan it all out up front, but the reality is when you hand somebody a camera that's kind of got endless possibilities what you can take, yeah, I was on some very long sessions in there. But the end result, which you're just going to need to take my word for because I don't have it, was uh, really, really good. There is a link at the end that you can, if you're interested, you can chase it up. It's on one of the HES blogs, there's a link to it. Each course culminated in a screening down at the GMAC Theatre in Glasgow, uh, where family and friends and staff were invited along to a graduation ceremony. That was, like I said, we, we kind of thought that it's, it would be dead easy to use our offices or something, but the GMAC is got basically a screening suite that looks like you're sitting in a cinema and actually seeing it on the big screen has quite a lot of impact and that was really, really useful for the guys and they really appreciated that. It does, however, magnify really shaky footage, but that's, <laughs> we don't talk about that. So I suppose the learning that we took from this is, in practice, there was quite a lot of staff and participant awareness, uh, rather, there was a lot of staff gained more knowledge of drovers and all the stuff related to the kind of the rural environment uh, and the rural history that they probably didn't have before. We have some staff who, that's a particular interest of theirs, but we have a number of staff who just like climbing hills and doing the personal development stuff and that. And it was really interesting. An awful lot of guys developed a lot more interest and knowledge in the background of that. Um, for us, incorporating heritage into our programmes is, seems a very natural fit, and it's actually something that we've developed um, further since this project started. It's now become a, a 
unique. It's a bit of a, a feature in some of the other stuff that we do. We deliver follow-on sessions post-course where we are still trying to uh, capitalise on the skills and everything people have. And one of the things that we used to do, we used to do a lot of classroom-based stuff now. If you think about the clients that we work with, sticking them in a classroom, as a general rule, doesn't work. That's why we work in the wilderness. So we do this great thing where we do all this work and then we start sitting people down in classrooms and talking to them. It doesn't really work. So we, we rethought a lot of that stuff. And rather than talking about motivation skills, research skills, how you find work, how you do all these things, in a classroom environment, we kind of turned that in its head a little bit and started doing stuff that involved getting people researching in practical ways. So we now have glorified treasure hunts where we will set research tasks and things. So they might be finding a particular tomb up at the necropolis then. They might be finding a particular exhibit that's down at the People's Palace. We're getting people out and about seeing their local... Astonishing the amount of people in Glasgow that don't know that the People's Palace exists or how to get to it. You know, things like that. So it's not become... We are not pretending to be a heritage-based programme, but it's kind of crept into some of the stuff that we're doing because it's actually proven to be a very, very useful way of engaging people. Um, I think one of the reasons this project works so well is it is really important to find skilled and engaged partners. We have done other courses and other bits and pieces where you're not quite meshing with the partner. It's like, but we don't do that. HES were very, very open to the idea of doing things differently. And on the back of the first course that we did, there was a kind of like, that worked really, really well, but... And we sat down and we pretty much turned some of it in his head for the second course. On the first course, for example, we went off to Dune Castle. We did all these great things. Really, really interesting in their own right. But the actual young people come back and said, didn't really feel, feel very congruent. Not their words exactly. But <laughs> they said, well, it felt like we jumped about a bit. Like you were in this period of history. And then we went and visited a cat. So on the second course, we took all that stuff out. And we just followed a much more realistic drover's route. We didn't take massive details to go and visit a castle and things. But that was actually the feedback of the young people based on their experience of the research at the beginning, saying, why were we doing that? And I suppose, in a way, we got carried away that we could. Um, we did, however, always finish up in Stirling Castle, and we did manage to get people on scaffold tours and carve and things. And that. But that was kind of the end of the course. I didn't feel quite so clunky. But I think some of the guys had felt that there was... We, we felt we were manufacturing things in the first course. So it was interesting that was actually the feedback from the young people more than staff. True collaboration and a willingness to do di things differently really is key for this stuff. And that is a, that's a two-way street. We learned an awful lot from working with HES, but I think most of the staff from HES that were involved would also say that they learned a lot about engaging with a not a typical client group for them. Um, Engaging with young people is one thing. Engaging with a group of young people with a variety of different and challenging backgrounds is a slightly different thing again. And you cannot assume that just because you have a real interest in something that necessarily the group of people sat in. Nobody came to this programme because of the heritage in the first instance in terms of participants. I think over the piece we won most of them round and a lot of them found it really interesting and quite engaging, but they didn't sign up to work on the basis that it was a heritage-based project. And I think sometimes you need to keep that in your thinking when you're doing the work. So all of our participants engaged very well in all aspects of the programme, even though many didn't have that interest at the start. The research skills and the teamwork required to create the film and to do the research around the heritage stuff at the beginning, however, are in invaluable skills. Really, really useful stuff. Uh, and a lot of the guys have gone on to some quite interesting positive destinations off the back of it. Got to be careful we don't slip into just using that type of language all the time. I was very <laughs> conscious of that when I was writing this. It's, it's, it's a language very common in what we do. We talk about positive destinations, stage one of the pipeline, stage two, and then you suddenly realise you're talking to a different audience. They go, what's he talking about? <laughs> um, so as it stands at the moment, we had 30 young people in total engaged in the project at different points. We had focus groups before we even started the project, looking at the different opportunities, what we could do, what we'd like to do, what they were interested in. Uh, we had 30-odd people involved in that. 23 participated in various pre-journey sessions with the intention of going out in the course. When push came to shove, we got 17 people who actually went out on the two courses. I think it was a, a nine and an eight. Um, and every single person completed the course. Uh, of the people who have completed the course, 
Three continued on at school. One is currently in, I think he's in Costa Rica, building something other way, Rally International. We have two who have gone on to do our change cycle programme, which is more of an employability-based programme. One did Venture Together, which is another employability-based programme. Four are in jobs, and two took up photography courses at college, which certainly wasn't a thing that we set out to do, but you know, they, they decided that that was something that really interested them. So in terms of the, the benefits to us, I think we can look at this and say, one of the initial things that we set out to do was, this was a personal development programme with another aspect to it. It still had to meet all of our normal aims and objectives for the programme, and I think we can say that we, we successfully achieved that. And as I said, you can find the footage at the Historic Environment Scotland blog. <laughs>